without further ado, please join me and the mighty class of 2016, welcoming actor, author, and philanthropist, Mr. Terrence J. Jenkins. Chairman, Attorney Michael Jones, thank you so much. To everyone uh, getting honored uh, this morning, it's truly an honor to be here with you this morning. To the Student Government Association, uh, to all the faculty and administrators here, give them a round of applause. All the faculty, all the teachers, putting in hours, everyone that's a part of this university. And of course, Mother's Day is tomorrow. I want to give a big shout out to all the moms out there. All the dads out there, and all the family members, everybody that's here, that said a prayer, a word of wisdom, gave some money to one of these young people, give them a round of applause, a big round of applause. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us here this morning. I'm nervous. I got a phone call from my manager, Fred. And he calls me up. Hey, Terrence, great news, man. Dillard University wants you to deliver their commencement speech this year. <laughs> Immediately, you know, Drake's trophy started playing in my head. Meek Mills, I never prayed for time like this, for time like this. I just, you know, it was hype, you know. I'm here with the hip hop president. I mean, Dr. Kimber. It's exciting. To be here with you, to sit next to you, it's exciting. So immediately, as soon as he called me up, I said, yes, I'll be there. It's a couple months away, no problem, I'll be ready, right? So one day, I'm, I'm, I'm in New York, walking through the airport, and, and I hear a voice. Hey, young blood, that's never good. <laughs> Whenever someone yells at you, hey, young blood, it's just an aggressive, it's real aggressive, I don't I don't like that turn. I, I try to ignore it. Put my headphones in a little more. Just try to not pay attention. Hey, young blood. All right, so we're going to have to do this, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. How are you? You're speaking at Dillard University real soon, aren't you? All right, yes, sir, I am. Well, I went to school there. My baby goes to school there, so you better not mess it up. <laughs> okay, okay. And immediately, as soon as he said those words, it shifted from the excitement and the energy of being here to, to pure nervousness, pure heart-wrenching nervousness. Those words just attacked me. I just felt them all over me. So I called my manager, Fred. Fred, yeah? Hey, um, give me some more details about uh, Dillard University. What, what, how, how's it going to be later? How many people are going to be there? What's the setup? How's this thing going to look? 218 graduates, a couple thousand people will be there. They'll have their Twitters, their Instagrams, their Snapchats. There'll be video recordings that'll be there. It'll be outside. You'll have to sit for a few hours. The sun will be out there. Wow. Okay. I'm starting to get nervous. The pressure is just starting to build more and more. Call them again a week later. Hey, hey, Fred. Yeah? So the uh, speech coming up at Dillard University. Who spoke last year? <laughs> oh, uh, that's easy. Oh, last year, uh, Denzel Washington. The year before that, Michelle Obama. <laughs> excuse, excuse me, who? Uh, last year, Academy Award. No, I know who they are. I, I mean, you mean to tell me? Last year, they had Academy Award winner Denzel Washington. The year before that, 
the first lady of the United States of America, Michelle Obama, and this year, the guy that used to host 106 and Park, Terrence Jackson. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm like, I'm like, what happened? I'm like, you know, I, it, you know, I thought maybe Nick Cannon was here last year, my, my boy Lil Wayne was last year. So I was like, somebody that I can call up, get some advice from. But, but to come after, you know, Denzel Washington and Michelle Obama, I mean, the pressure was just at an all-time high. So I'm having nightmares about standing here right now. <laughs> right there in the audience, right where we're just sitting with the uh, tall gentleman right here with the What's your name? Well, Asma, Asma, I picked the hardest name here. Uh, 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 Asma, yeah. as soon as, right there where Asma is sitting, it was, it was uh, Dr. Kimbrough was in that seat, uh, Michelle Obama was there, Denzel Washington, this is all in my dream. Uh, right where she's sitting, it was Rihanna sitting there. Rihanna has nothing to do with this, but she was there as well. And, and the guy from the airport was sitting right next to him, just shaking his head. Told you he was going to mess up. Denzel, I told you he was going to mess up. My man. That's how it all went down in my dream. I wake up, sweat dripping, night after night, because I'm so nervous to be here. Because I, I just, I want to tell you guys everything. I want to give my entire heart to you, and the pressure just mounted, and I didn't know what to say. I started looking on YouTube for commencement speeches. I started reading books. I wrote a speech, threw it away, wrote another speech, threw it away. I mean, I've been preparing for this like a test, because I wanted to give you guys my heart and soul, and, and I didn't know how to consolidate and then I, I, I realized, you know, last night when I, when I went to sleep, I was so nervous. And when I woke up this morning, it all went away. Because I knew once I saw your faces, and I knew once I came out here, things would be different. And when I saw your faces, there's a fundamental reason why I'm able to speak here right now. Because I realized that most of you are probably drunk. And hung over from last night. And, you know, half of them are asleep over there. And uh, half of this side, they think I'm Trey Song. So they, they just. So I realized there are really only 47 people here that might even know that I'm here to remember this speech. And so as long as I just concentrate on those 47, I'll be okay. And I also realized that there's nobody better to tell you how it feels to go out into the real world than me. Because I know that it can be nerve-wracking. I know that there can be the pressure of who came before you. I know that there can be the pressure of who's interviewing against you, who's going after that job against you. And I want to tell you guys that in life, everything comes down to two decisions. Fear and love. And my love for you this morning was greater than my fear for you. So if I can get through this speech, you guys can get through life. So I prepared, I called my man DJ Khaled to get permission. I prepared three major keys. I was going to do 80 for the, the, the 80th anniversary, but I figured that might be too long. So I'm going to speak. Three major keys that will help you get through. All right? Key number one, execute your plan A. Execute your plan A. Will Smith once said, there's no such thing as a plan B. It only distracts from your plan A. Well, when I graduated and I was in your shoes, I had a big plan B. You know, I knew what my plan A was. My plan A was doing what I'm doing right now. But I had a plan B because everybody told me that I had to get a, a real job when I graduated. I had a bunch of money that I owed back to the university. My student loans were through the roof. I had nothing, and, and I needed to get a job with a 401k to, you know, make my parents proud and make my community proud and, and impress my frat brothers. So I got a job at a marketing company that I didn't really love. And I woke up every morning, and, and, and I just had dreams of, of, of being in, in Hollywood and, and chasing after my dreams. Well, I auditioned for a bunch of things that, that first year after school, and I got told no time after time after time. I auditioned for the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. Y'all remember that movie? I, I didn't get it. Um, but I auditioned for it and got told no. And eventually, I started to give up. One of my boys called, well, Fred called me and said they're having auditions in New York for BET. 
So I took all the money in my bank account that I had at the time. I had about $400. I used that for a plane ticket, called in sick to work, flew to New York and auditioned just to get rejected. I went into the room. I had a paper in my hand. I was nervous. And I completely fumbled the audition. But my boy was like, listen, they're having auditions tomorrow morning again in, in, in Atlanta. Let's go audition again. When I auditioned the second time, everything was different. I knew what would happen when I walked into the audition room. I knew what they were going to ask me to do. And I didn't have the fear of, of, of messing up again because I had already messed up the first time. You guys know how that story ended. I ended up getting the opportunity at BET, and it led to everything that happened in my career. And, and it, you know, fundamentally changed my life. I'll never go back to a plan B. I know that some of you have financial issues. Some people will get pregnant at a young age like my mom did. People will get sick. There will be health issues that will happen in your life. People in your family that you'll have to help out. There will be a million and one reasons why you should play it safe. Why you should fall back on your plan B. Why you should walk down the straight line. But this is your life. This is your opportunity. You here today is a fresh start. You don't have to settle for mediocrity. You can do whatever you want to do. Execute your plan A. I've never gotten anything in my life because I was the best at doing it. You know, when I'm on the set of Think Like a Man, Kevin Hart is way funnier than me. Michael Ely, way better looking. Taraji B. Henson, uh, an incredible dramatic actress. I could never do what they do. I've never been the fastest, the smartest. I'm not the most articulate. I'm not the most charming. I'm not the most anything. But what I do is I work hard. You can't out hustle me. I stay focused. I get the job done. And I execute my plan now. Major key number two. Do not be afraid to fail. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. He locked himself in his room and he cried. Walt Disney was famously fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination and having no original ideas. Think about that the next time you're at Disney World. Harlan David Sanders tried to sell his original recipe for chicken and was rejected 1,009 times. That's Colonel Sanders. That's KFC, in case you didn't put together the dots. <laughs> Think about it. Everybody in life that's successful is successful because they're not afraid to fail. I went through a really bad breakup a couple of years ago. It was my fault. Girl broke my heart. Ended up in a, in a way that just had me really depressed. It became the inspiration for a film that I wanted to do called Perfect Match. Started shopping the film around and nobody wanted to buy the film. So we all made it independently. We did it ourselves. Once we did the film, in my heart, something told me, it's time. I had a great job at E! News. I was on TV every single day. But after I did that, something just flipped in me, and, and I knew that it was time to leave and go after my dream. Everybody thought I was crazy. Black people don't quit jobs. So when I decided that I was going to leave, everybody was calling me, all of my friends, people in the industry, why are you leaving being on TV every day? Like, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Like what, 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 like, what are you doing? But I knew that in my heart, I had something that I had to accomplish for myself. So around Christmas, I, I, I made the announcement, I left the news, and it was really nerve-wracking coming here because I was like, how am I going to speak to them if I am unemployed? But I followed after it. I got a phone call right after uh, from my agent saying that we have been, you know, the movie that we have been shopping, The Perfect Match, got purchased by Lionsgate for distribution. They wanted to buy the film, they wanted to put it in theaters. A week after that, I got a phone call from Mark Burnett, who is the guy that, you know, does Survivor and Apprentice and Shark Tank and all those things. He called me and said, wow, I've been watching you for years. I've wanted to hire you to do one of my shows forever, but I just know you've been working every day, so I know you can't do it. 
but I have a show coming up. It films in a couple of weeks. It's called Couples. It shoots in Anguilla. Could you do the show for me? And then shortly after that, once I did that job, it worked out so well with Fox. They asked me this year to host Miss USA. Unbelievable. And so when I think about how these last few months, these last five months of my life have been, I mean, I completely jumped out of the window. I had no idea what I was going to talk to you about today, what I was going to tell my mom. I had no idea. And, you know, I had been on TV for a long time, from, from BBC to E. I had a, had a lot of pressure. And, and I jumped out the window, and it worked out. And so what I'm telling you guys today is that in life, there'll be ebb and flow. There'll be times where you have something that, that's right. There, you'll be in a relationship that... Ah, You'll have a friendship. You'll be trying, you'll be in a business or, or at a job, and one day you'll wake up and it'll be, ah. And I just want you to remember these words. It's okay. Don't be afraid to fail. This is your life. Go after your dreams. Everybody that's successful, from Oprah to Puff to President Barack Obama, is successful because they weren't afraid to fail. President Obama had to give up his Senate seat before he could run for president. You can't be afraid to fail. Last key. If you get an opportunity to take a selfie with Prince, take it. A couple of years ago, well actually two years ago, backstage at a BET Awards, I presented on stage, and as soon as I walked off, Prince was standing right there. He was about to present next. There was about 90 seconds uh, between the time that I walked off and the time that he had to be on stage. Now, I'm, I'm a huge Prince fan. Is any, any other Prince fans here? Yeah. 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 I mean, I want definitely a Prince. She was uh, <laughs> no, that thing. She got the purple hair. I love it. Big fan of Purple Rain. Love his music. Love his style. Inspired my career in so many ways. And I had an opportunity. My phone was literally in my hand. Battery completely charged. My Snapchat was right. I, I was there. I had an opportunity to take a photo with him. But my pride and ego got in the way. I didn't know how he would respond to me. I was, you know, nervous. I mean, he's a big icon, a big celebrity. I didn't know if he would, you know, laugh at me or not want to do it. I didn't know what would happen. So I just nodded my head and kept walking. My birthday was April 21st, and I got a phone call from my mom, and uh, I never really heard that in her voice. I mean, it was really like a family member had died. She called me, and you know, I'm thinking she's calling to wish me a happy birthday, and she calls me. She actually told me the news before I looked online and saw it, and all I could think to myself was, wow, I, I, I wish that you know, I could text my mom the selfie that I took with him and tell her the story. And, and I still told her the story, and I still have it. But it, it really made me realize, you know, how short life is. We always think we'll get another opportunity to do something. We always think we'll get another chance to go after that dream that we had. We always think we'll have tomorrow to fix and mend the, 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 the fight, the long-standing fight that we've had with a family member. We always think that we'll have time to tell the people that we love that we love them. And that's not always the case. So in life, if you ever get an opportunity to do something that you want to do, you go after it. To the class of 2016, I am so proud of you. I know what it feels like to be you. I know what it feels like to party hard, wake up, and, and make it in time for that exam the next morning. I know what it feels like to wait for that refund check so that you can pay your rent. And buy yourself shoes. And eat. I know what it feels like to have to concentrate in class when Beyonce just dropped an album. I mean, why would there be class after Lemonade dropped? There should be no more class. You got dance moves for formation to learn. I know what it feels like. Four years is a long time. You guys should be very proud of yourself. And as you go into the real world, remember everything I told you, or don't. But I know what I'm going to do. Because right now, I'm not going to let this opportunity slip. So if you don't mind, for the first time ever, 
we're going to do the first commencement Snapchat in history. You guys ready for that? Snapchat, what's up? I'm at my favorite school, Dillard University. Make some noise. Class of 2016. Congratulations. Congratulations. Go get them.